So I will create a new canvas in Dimension. To get a really high res render, I like to set that view to 100 and then scale up to um, around 2000 pixels. 1925 is great for me. Any canvas size that you think would work for you, go for it. The smaller, the faster, the larger, the longer. That's how it goes with render time. Same with the resolution here. If you want a really high res and crispy, go to 300 or higher. If you just want to rough out something and send it just to get a concept, 72 is great too. So now we are going to come back um, and export our selections. So we have to click on each individual object that we've created and then click export selection. And we'll collect them all here and export them at once. Well, I wish you could select all of them and click export selection once, but it just doesn't work like that. It clumps them all together. So we've got to go one by one. And now time to label. I will label this actually juice dash box. The names only matter to you because again, they don't import directly into dimensions. So you have to rename them anyways. And it's very important to select the OBJ format from this dropdown. Select all of these and click export. All right, now that you've got your OBJ files, it's time to start layering and bringing them in. So I'm gonna start with the box. Ooh, it's large. Here we go, here we go. All right, I'm gonna get it set up. I like it. And then the handy dandy button to move to ground. That way you know it's perfectly resting on the ground. Where's the hole? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now I'll place the top and I will rotate it around until it lines up. And so I'll name this the top. This is the box and select both of them and I want them to be aligned. So align center, align center, and align top. So top, I will select by itself, lift it up and move it back. And let's move to the top to see if that's aligned. I will select these again, go here, and I can back align so that the back of the box lines up not quite there, so I'll scoot it manually until it looks how I want. It also depends on what angle you're looking at it. And I'm going to bring in juice flap side. Sometimes the shapes don't come in the way that you're expecting them to. So at the top, we can come back here to a line and get these lined up really pretty. But I don't need that all the way at the top, so I'm going to nudge it back down. Juice flap number two. And this one, I might have to get a closer look because again, it is confused about. And I got that triangle shape all wrong. It's supposed to point in. Yeah, I like this. We're moving it, we're moving, we're shaking. And then this, um, this little flap was kind of tucked in a little bit more on our example because the larger flap overlaps it. So I can either tuck it in here a little bit and then I can bring this one out. Yeah, we'll connect these so that they're in the middle of this juice box. And remember, we have that little bit of a curve, so we'll cover up that with this top flap. So in size, I'm going to make this 219. So it can cover up that flap and it makes them look like it's connected. And then we need that little strip, the little juice strip. And I need to adjust the width a little bit too. So I'm just gonna do that right in dimension. See, 22. Get that pretty lined up. Let's hit our pre-render and see how it looks. I need to adjust the lights so I can get a better look. So I'm gonna scroll down and find 
my three point light, drag that over the scene. I like this one. I like these other scenes too, but I like the three point light because it lets me have more finesse about how much light, how intense it is, the height of it. Um, right now it's really intense because it's just white on white. We're just getting blinded. So I'll come back to environment light and I'm going to bring that down to, I don't know, 34. It's still a little intense, but I think I can adjust the other lights and lower those down so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, the intensity is at 100% for the key light. Let me bring that down. I can bring up the height. Gives us a little more look at the contrast. And I'll still bring the intensity down. We're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere. And then I had my little side strip here. And we'll just align those so that they're all together. And then I'm slightly tilting these off the perfect axis so that it looks more organic and these connect as shapes and it just works better that way. And what is the width on this strip? 22. That's what I picked. Okay, do 22 here too. So those align. Yay! And whatever rotation I have selected here, it's seven. We'll choose seven for this too. So those go together and they combine into one shape. And sometimes it really just takes some patience and some guessing about how these shapes are going to all look together. Um, but I think it's looking pretty good. And I think once we put graphics on it, that's the most important part. I think once we put the graphics on, it's going to look even better. But now we're going to move over to textures and I'm going to choose glossy actually, because yes, it is like a cardboard paper, but the external is what counts, right? Like that's what we've been going <laughs> going over. Like the outside is what counts. Green intensity, we're gonna turn that like all the way down maybe to like 0.5. And I'm just gonna keep dropping glossy on here until that's all we have. It might have to be a little different. If your texture is something that really matters to your shape, you might have to adjust it and make it cohesive throughout. And the reason why I like making these little individual pieces is because sometimes when you make it all as one piece, the way that you apply graphics and textures looks different and it can be warped and skewed with the shape, which isn't always the effect that you want. So I end up making these little pieces and shapes and combining them here to get the effect that I want. So we're gonna go keep turning down these grain intensities applying it if it didn't get applied. Oh, I'm forgetting the straw. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to draw a circle that matches up with our straw diameter and flip to outline. And then I'll go to extrude. And the straw being curved like that, I <laughs> honestly don't have the mental energy to figure that out right now so I'm just gonna make it a straight straw like for us um, like great value Walmart kids um, if you don't know what that is it's like the generic brand I'm just gonna make a straight straw here so just keep it easy um, you know it most of the time if you're making a mock-up for a juice box the straw is not gonna make or break it just make what's gonna sell your concept that's all that needs to happen all right, so I have the straw. I'm gonna bring it in and it's still a little wide. So let me scale it down. I will do 23, nope, 18. Cause I wanna see a little bit of the hole, right? Like I wanna see the straw not sit in there completely flush because the straw kind of wiggles around. Look at our render preview. That looks pretty good guys. Okay, I know I need to make my straw plastic, so I've got to find the material that is plastic. And translucence, turn that pretty much all the way up, like 98%. Color needs to be white so that it's clear. And then the roughness I can bump up a little bit. Let's see how that's looking. Yeah, look at our little straw. Okay, so now I'm gonna change the colors of the box 
I think I want a green juice box. So I'll come in here and I will choose a color. If you have a specific hex code, you can put the value there, but I'm gonna choose that one. I think that looks pretty good. Choose that color for all the layers. Computer is running a little slow. I'm gonna turn that render off. That'll, that'll help. Once you have all of your sections and the color that you want, then you can start placing your graphics on top. I'm just gonna design something a little cute, a little cutie cutie. All right guys, and that is it. That is how to make a juice box. Um, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed my content, I'd love if you gave me a like, uh, if you subscribed, um, and then left me a comment telling me you know, what part you enjoyed or um, what video you wanna see next. So um, I always take requests. I'm super open to answering questions. We're gonna figure out how to use Dimension together so that we don't have to learn another 3D software. I think we can do it all with Dimension and I'm really excited for the potential. So keep following. I'm gonna make more videos, I promise. I'm gonna get on a schedule here soon. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys next time.